A suicide is the second leading cause of death among children, teens and young adults ages 10 to 34. Here to help us understand the terrifying statistics is CEO of Ignite Teens, Mendy Barron. Mendy, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely, thank you for having me. So September Suicide Awareness Month followed by October Mental Health Awareness Month and it does seem like there have been some really big pushes in the media and on social media to, to be aware of suicide prevention and mental health awareness. Can you share with us some signs and symptoms? Absolutely, so you know, the, the scary thing about, about suicide and suicide attempts is that it's very insidious, it's not very predictable. Um, it's not like you, you know, quote, see it coming. Um, and, and a lot of times it's impulsive and sometimes it's premeditated. But in the end of the day, the one difference that is really made is if you say something, if you step in. Um, and so you are correct. We've seen a lot of social media campaigns. Um, there's even a, an organization here in Nevada for teens called Hope Means Nevada. And they have a take five where you just call five friends, check in. Um, see how they're feeling, see what's going on, because it's not easy to spot, but you can literally change a life by being there in that exact moment um, and either stop an impulsive decision or even a premeditated one. Um, so when it comes to the signs, um, although obviously it's not a perfect science, um, but a lot of times you look at what people are, are, are struggling with in general, and then you look at kind of what their life is like. So for example, if I was talking to a parent who was concerned about a loved one, um, I would say something to the effect of, well, let's look at a baseline, right? Normally, how, what is their emotional outlook like? Are they more labile? Is, are their emotions up and down? Are they more or less emotional? Um, eating and sleep habits are things you can look at. You know, eating less, eating more, sleeping less, sleeping more. Social life, you know, withdrawing. Obviously, that's like kind of a cliche, like withdrawing, but a lot of times it's the opposite. Mm. Um, it's, sometimes it's the life of the party that 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 is someone to take their life and you don't expect it but they were looking for help and they were reaching out yeah. um when it comes to teens school is a great barometer because they're in school for most of the day at least prior to covid um and and you could really see okay grades are failing they're struggling they're struggling with peers um so it's really important to look at people's baselines and that is what is so scary, Mendy, is that everyone's symptoms or signs are vastly different, so it can be hard to spot. You did mention school as a great barometer, of course, before the pandemic, and I am curious how COVID has changed the suicide rate. So, so COVID has unfortunately impacted it significantly. If you're looking at Nevada right now, I know we mentioned at the beginning of the segment that suicide was a number two. It's the number one for teens in Nevada. Um, and that's really tied directly to COVID. Um, we're being separated from our, our social connections. Uh, we're being, you know, we're stuck in the house. We can't get out, we can't express fears. For many young people, normally your parents are there to help you, but now your parents have to go back to work and you're home alone. Um, you just have a lot of struggles that are compounded. And then the number one thing, of course, is that at all times there's imminent fear of death right? It feels like the world's going crazy. There's riots and there's politics and there's fighting and there's you're stuck in the house and there's, you know, th this virus that's killing everybody out. And, and so there's a real sense of hopelessness. I mean, that's really the, the key is a sense that being here and being here at this time, it just isn't worth it and that there's no other alternative. And there really is, and that's why it's so important, like you mentioned, the take five, the reaching out to five friends and checking in with them. Uh, what else can we do besides that? Can we share the uh, suicide prevention hotline number? That, that's very common. So sharing the suicide prevention hotline number is obviously a wonderful thing. There's wonderful resources. Hope Means Nevada, Can You Hear Me is a teen support line. There's teen suicide line. There's adult suicide hotlines. Um, there's NAMI, which provides mental health support for families. Um, there's obviously Lady Gaga's initiative that's, that, that's made huge waves uh, for, for young folks. Um, but most importantly is at this time in our history, where we are now is to take a moment and, and do your part. Reach out to someone, check in, say hi, what's up? It's not a big commitment right. to let somebody know that, that you're there for them. Okay, Mendy, take care of yourself and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Have a good one.